interesting. Now you're going to see how this happened. So these people wanted to study. This horrifying story goes back to 1965, when Saul Krugman from the New York University Medical Center. Where did you see that word? New York University Medical Center. Right, on the congressional record. You pass. You all fail. <laughs> Another documented biological weapons contractor for the Department of Defense, Lytton Bionetics and New York University Medical Center. There, a fellow by the name of Saul Krugman, who was being paid by the Army to investigate hepatitis B viruses, which he believed, and his colleagues did too, were cancer viruses. That besides liver cirrhosis and liver inflammation, this cancer virus would cause, would, would cause liver cancer. So he wanted to study this in the human population. Trouble is, how many fools do you know are going to volunteer for this? Not too many. So these people covertly volunteer a very unique human population. Try Willowbrook State School mentally retarded children on Staten Island in New York. And in 1965, these people began to inoculate children at Willowbrook with these hepatitis B viruses. And of course, many of the children died. And over the five-year period, 65 to 70, Saul Krugman and his colleagues had tried various heat-treated vaccines on these kids. And if they tried it and the kids died, their attitude was, oh, shucks, we'll just have to heat it up a little bit more and try it again. And that research continued to 1970. when. He felt that he was close to developing a vaccine to prevent hepatitis, and he now hands the project over to the world's leading vaccine developer for the world's largest pharmaceutical company in the world, Merck, Sharp, and Dome, which, by the way, have direct connections to IG Farben and the Third Reich. So Maurice Hilleman. Maurice Hilleman is the fellow who Robert Gallo tells me about when I call him several weeks ago. He says, after having read the book, have you heard the good news? I said, no, I haven't. He says, you know that fellow you, who you heavily implicated in your book, Emerging Viruses, Agent Ebola, Maurice Hilleman? I said, yes. He says, well, President Clinton has just announced he's about to reward Hilleman with a Presidential Medal of Honor for his service to American medical science and military science. My response was, I'm sure Hilleman's elated. Here's Hilleman's story. So Hilleman takes over from Krugman, wants to expand the study to include 200,000 human doses of the 1974 experimental hepatitis B vaccine. To do that, you need a lot of help and a lot of viruses. So who does he get to help him? Why his good friends and colleagues at the Centers for Disease Control. Why, you know those disease cowboys those disease busters who are, you know, putting their lives on the line to help you by going to the Ebola region of Zaire and, you know, without gloves and masks. They're going through the forest, picking up animals all over the place and insects without gloves and masks, looking for the Ebola virus. Right, I'll believe that. But yet most people do when they see that on television, like CNN showed that. And they get the disease people from the Food and Drug Administration, the infectious disease people from the FDA. You know who those people are, don't you? Those are the wonderful people who want to regulate your botanicals and healing herbs and take your vitamins off the market or standardize them at least in accordance with now a new set of regulations coming around us from the backside through GATT Treaty from the World Health Organization, the Rockefeller-funded World Health Organization, you see? where now, a couple years ago, we defeated the efforts to take our vitamins away from us because our movie stars got involved. Well, over the next couple years, you will find that it's not going to be so easy because this time, they're going to come at you with GATT sanctions, international sanctions. They will take against the United States if we do not fall into line. That's how they've done it and are doing it now. So the FDA, these wonderful people who want to do all this to our vitamins, and if you're able to get vitamins after this goes into effect, like, for example, a good multivitamin should have at least 200 to 400 international units of vitamin E, good D-alpha tocopherol, you know, not mixed, not manufactured, not synthetic, but pure. You, if you will get that, you will have to pay probably 10 to 20 times as much, and you'll have to have a physician. You'll have to go see the doctor for a signature on that. 
That's what's in the works right now. These are the people who put on the fast track for testing and approval, AZT, 3TC, protease inhibitors, DDI, DZC, which most plausibly are killing far more people than the AIDS viruses. But they want to pull your vitamins off yourselves. So they get the FDA and the National Institute for Allergies and Infectious Diseases. Then these three government agencies, along with Merck, Sharp, and Dome, the world's leading pharmaceutical company, develop 200,000 human doses in four lots of a contaminated hepatitis B vaccine. Now, here's how they did it. They tried to grow enough viruses. They need a lot of viruses, I told you. They tried to grow these viruses in the children. It wouldn't work. Oh, couldn't grow enough in the kids. They then tried to grow it in cell culture. Wouldn't grow there either. They needed something live to grow it in. So they ultimately, they ultimately selected rhesus monkeys and chimpanzees. Heavily contaminated rhesus monkeys and chimpanzees supplied by Litton Bionetics researchers. How do I know that? Well, I've got their contract. Now, how do we know that they were contaminated? Well, these researchers themselves said that 70% of their caged laboratory animals were environmentally contaminated with hepatitis B viruses and a whole assortment of other viruses, which we know now included cytomegalo, Epstein-Barr, the herpes type viruses, and another unique enzyme associated virus, reverse transcriptase associated virus, that unique enzyme that makes the AIDS virus sick, was in a virus also there in simian foamy retroviruses that were also contaminated in these animals. So here's how they made the vaccine now. They grew the hepatitis B viruses in these contaminated animals. When they had grown enough, they extracted the viruses out of them. Now when you extract a live virus out of a live contaminated animal, all of the other viral contaminants come with it. And now they inoculated this entire viral mishmash, this mixture, into the children, into the gay men in New York City, and into the blacks in Central Africa, Eastern Zaire, and Northwest Uganda. Now of course many of these people died, but the ones that lived had developed antibodies. It was these people who lived, whose blood they took. And they shipped the blood to Merck Sharp and Dome Laboratory where they separated the serum from the whole cell fractions. And it was from that serum, that heavily contaminated serum. And also, to make it even worse, these people had 10 years previously get, received the Salk and Sabin vaccines, which were heavily contaminated with monkey viruses. So they were human incubation chambers like at least 25% of this audience with monkey viruses in their human bodies. And so they took their blood, and it was from this that they made the first four lots of 1974 experimental hepatitis B vaccine containing 200,000 human doses that they then inoculated, once again, in the different regions of the world, principally New York and Central Africa. Now this, what I've just told you, to make a long story short, I could spend an hour explaining it, literally is the only theory that has been advanced so far on the origin of AIDS that reconciles and integrates all of the scientific, documented, and confirmed facts. Now why can I stand before you so clear and so uh, sure of what I'm telling you is the gospel? Well, because I found the contracts. I found the contracts. You know how I found the contracts? God's grace. The story, real quick, I'll end it here. In fact, what you're looking at here is the contract under which numerous AIDS like an Ebola like viruses were developed. You see, then this is Robert C. Gallo from the project officer from the National Cancer Institute. Here's Robert Ting. See, John Landon was director of Bionetics Research Labs. National Institute of Health contract number 712025. It was entitled The Investigation of Viral Carcinogenesis in Primates. That's cancer production through viral infection in monkeys and humans. And you look at the date that they started, those in the front can see, February 12, 1962.